Brian. Shoop filling in for Tom O'Brien. This, of course, is the Tom O'Brien Show. I hope you all are having a great day. Uh, first things first, you know, we're getting ready and bracing for uh, Hurricane Milton that's coming in. We are going to be closed tomorrow and Thursday as well. I spoke with Tom earlier, and that is uh, the plan we're sticking with as of right now. Of course, if you're in the cone, you can go ahead and check that online. Uh, at least for Pinellas and Hillsborough County, they have evac orders for zones A, B, and C as it is now, and then mandatory uh, for mobile homes. If you are in one of those and you, and listen, you know, I've lived in Florida for 28 years, my entire life. I get the concept of Floridians not wanting to leave. You know, we always kind of get this, uh, it's gonna hit us and it turns at the last minute and that's fine and there is the potential for this to happen here. Um, but I think what we saw with um, Helene or Helen, the last hurricane we have, it's, it's just not worth uh, taking that risk. So there are some pretty strict evac orders uh, for those areas. Uh, the governor spoke as well earlier. You can check that out on YouTube. And they provided uh, some resources um, online and um, physically as well uh, for people who are affected and going to be affected. Let's take a look at what we have going on right now. The composite up about 1.29%. Dow Jones Industrial up about 0.26%. That dollar is still pretty strong on its uh, counter trend bounce. Trading up about 0.16%, trading at 102.56. Crude's coming down a little bit back to earth. Okay, you've leased the Brent off about 4.28%, and then you have the Ford contract off about 4.25%. Uh, that comes essentially uh, after some news that Israel was going to. Um, limit any kind of retaliation or strikes against Iran, uh, essentially to military targets, um, not nuclear and, and, you know, I guess assumedly not um, any kind of gas infrastructure or, um, you know, municipal infrastructure. Looking at the ES right now, trading up about 0.87%, 5,794. You look at the SPY today, we're up about 0.83%, trading at 572 uh, but we do have uh, some, some light volume to the upside there, and we'll see kind of what we can uh, muster out through the rest of the week. Again, we'll be off tomorrow and Thursday. Let's take a look if anything else is jumping out at me right now as we're just kind of running over. Not seeing too much. Steel Dynamics off about 2.2% right now, and Tesla up about 1.7%. Yeah, my charts are acting funny here, huh? Yeah, so again, coming off that 130 area, we'll see if we can bounce off the 127, maybe the 125, and get a nice trading range. Uh, let's take a look at SMCI. This is Super Micro Computer. Um, they are dipping off today after a major run up to the upside. We spoke about this yesterday, but on this news that they're delivering, what, 100,000 GPUs, we discussed this. That doesn't, it's just kind of strange because they don't make GPUs. One, this is what we're bringing up, right? Uh, so whatever they're getting them from, you know, they have to pay for the cost of acquisition and then whatever they deliver to people. And then additionally, they are not reporting their financials. It is such a weird thing. Um, I, I think, again, there's this weird way that the market's functioning where it's almost not logical in some capacity, right? We were seeing that with Hims too, where it's sold off um, for not really a great reason. Right, the, the the drug that was taken off the FDA uh, list was not the drug that Hims was compounding. They rebounded a little bit, right, off of that. Supermicro goes up on this news that they're delivering 100,000 GPUs. I mean, that's great, but they don't make GPUs. That's not what they do. Um, and so, anyways, it's coming back down to earth a little bit now. And again, um, there's just a lot of gray area with that company regarding failure uh, to file. We can take a look at HPE, right? So one of the big things that I speak about when I talk about Supermicro is their major moat is these liquid cooling systems, right? Liquid cooling systems, no doubt are the future for these massive server farms. One of the things I said is that the company Hewlett Packard is attempting to break into it, and it seems like they're doing okay uh, with a uh, showcasing that they have, right? So I'm about 0.53% right now, trading at 2097. Let's talk a little bit about it. Uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise hosts investor events. It's gonna be Thursday. They're showcasing its artificial intelligence uh, solutions. 
Um, Bank of America expects its liquid cooling technology for AI servers in the data center will be highlighted. These guys are up 23%, right? Uh, as it stands now on the yearly. Uh, HPE stock was a fraction. Okay, where that? HPE agreed to buy Juniper, which is massive. Uh, and really, the only other people they can compete with, um, again, in this liquid cooling scale, which no doubt is the future, is going to be SMCI. And uh, I have doubts over the future of that company because they're getting kind of shady, right? This is, I took a look at Hewlett Packard's website just with the cooling solutions. I'd really recommend checking this kind of stuff out when you hear this new tech because we are in a really cool kind of environment right now where all this new stuff is coming in and uh, there's the potential to, to make huge gains going forward. These companies can situate themselves to be um, integral to the economy in the future that we're building, especially with these with, with AI, right? So basically what's appealing about it that I found pretty interesting, they're doing a hybrid system, which is very interesting as well. You get 70% goes to water, that gets taken off somewhere else, um, dissipates the heat and then air as well. This is pretty cool though. The direct liquid PLC cooled data center cooling cost per server is $45.99 a server. For trad air cooling, it's 254. Obviously, they did the round number of 10,000 servers. You really you spend, you know, this much, 2.5. This additionally as well, again, uh, will have impacts going forward, um, especially if we start really implementing stuff at a government level of taxing people based on uh, the amount of CO2 emission they have. Um, so these guys, you're saving a lot, uh, essentially, if something like that comes around. It's only, you know, 3.9 million pounds of CO2 released in the atmosphere per year with liquid cooling versus 21, you know, 0.6. This is pretty interesting in and of itself. Essentially, it kind of makes sense if you're building out these large centers. So I'm taking a, I'm taking a closer look at Hewlett Packard right now. I, I still want to see some more. We're going to wait for that event on Thursday. If anything comes out and it's like really jumping at you, as long as, you know, of course, I have power or whatever, uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, because... I think at this price point, it's kind of interesting. You're only at $27 billion right now for this whole company. Um, so at 2096, obviously that's accessible just on an equity level. 27 billion isn't, you know, massive or anything like that for a market cap of a company that could get in and, uh, you know, really contribute to this massive mobilization towards AI. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back with Basil Chapman.